For some reason, this officer seems to think that protesting and reporting fall under different constitutional rights. We were doing an all-day fundraiser, and we were trying to get to $500,000 so that we could hire our first investigative reporter. Can you refresh it for me one more time? Yes! You did it! You did it! You're going to ruffle some feathers, but that's when you know your journalism has impact. There's a lot of issues to cover. There's the Dakota Access Pipeline. There's Trump. There's the donors. We're in a deeply problematic period, and it really requires us to stand up against the establishment, against anybody who is trying to manipulate the system and run over everyday people. We're gonna build the greatest investigative reporting team in the country. We're gonna be the watchers on the wall. We're gonna be the sword in the darkness. Come up with a new model. I mean, you can't be reliant on the same sources of revenue, the same sources of social affirmation, the same you know, professional incentives as all these other people who collectively were responsible for one of the greatest mass failures in the history of the United States. I talked to a mainstream journalist uh, yesterday, and he's like, so wait, let me get this right. Your audience just gives you the money to hire the reporters, then you hire the reporters with that money. That's like the greatest thing I've ever heard. If you watch traditional legacy media today, what you see is a mirror image of what you see on ESPN and SportsCenter. Go to the middle of the country, talk to people. That's what the mainstream press should be doing, and that's what TYT is doing. Holding the status quo accountable, whether financially, economically, socially, racially. In spite of the fact that people are much more likely to click on the trivial stuff, you still have to do the investigations, because if you don't, nobody else will. Just last night, right before Inauguration Day, we passed a million. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Investigative journalism so often is what changes the world. If you look back at almost any social movement, go back far enough, you're gonna see a piece of journalism that opened people's eyes. It's the absence of a credible platform to ask meaningful questions of corporate and political power that is then abusing the middle class so severely and at the same time in a way that people really can't tell where it comes from. You guys have been amazing. We were trying to reach a million, we did. We said at every 500,000, we'd hire new folks, we did. I can't wait to see what they produce. We do have really powerful tools right now that we've never had before to empower people who might not be listened to. But there's been an active cabal of corporations, lobbyists, banks, politicians, and the media to essentially concentrate power and leave people in Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania. It's not just the Rust Belt, I mean, all over the country, kind of scrapping for the crumbs. And that's the main problem with mainstream media nowadays is that you have so many hacks on air. So many of the things that I found lacking in TV news, I sort of came to the conclusion that a lot of it stemmed from never having had to work a beat, break a story. Like very big healthcare news in the last 24 hours. This is another Young Turks exclusive for you guys. Jonathan Larson, our managing editor at TYT. Politics. Moments ago here in the Capitol, Republicans passed legislation that would repeal and replace Obamacare. I have an announcement. We crossed two million. Yes! Let's do it! You did it! You did it! I love a show by the people, for the people, of the people. I know who delivered you guys. We could not have hired them if it wasn't for you. And let's go get some justice.